Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this month's haul uh, of October. Uh, I bought a lot of books this month and uh, I'm afraid I won't do a haul video next month because uh, uh, I have to save up some money for uh, uh, some more books. <laughs> and this is my dog, Ewald. Hello, Ewald. Could you could you say hello to him? Yeah. <laughs> so, hop now. Yes. So let's begin with the uh, first book. I will start with the uh, trade paperbacks. And now we have uh, Transmetropolitan. Uh, this is volume two, and then I have volume zero. Uh, so now I've got from zero to five in the three paperbacks. I really like Transmetropolitan. Uh, it, it took a while before I got interested in it. But now when uh, I've read that many, uh, I'm uh, kind of hooked. I like I like the way he uh, it's very uh, political. Uh, he goes against the mainstream of everything and uh, against capitalism. And uh, I really like that uh, kind of political thinking. Well, uh, let's move on. About this, uh, like a velvet glove, cast in iron by Daniel Claus. And. Uh, It's fucking brilliant. It's so weird and uh, funny at the same time. It's I uh, laugh my ass off reading this. And uh, oh, it's not. Uh, it's so. Uh, it's so incredibly weird, and it's uh, beautiful. If you like weird books, read this one. Like a velvet glove cast in iron. And then we got uh, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Got this uh, for a really good price. And uh, I've wanted it. I, I have wanted to read it a long time now. Uh, so I finally did. I, I've seen the uh, cartoon, uh, the animated uh, version of the, this book. And I, I wasn't impressed really. Uh, I think it's a really good the book, but uh, it's so weird sometimes. Uh, and not, and not, not in a good way, I think. It's a, it's a really good uh, writing, but uh, some of the things I couldn't really understand. But uh, uh, yeah, let's let's keep it at that. I know that a lot of people love uh, the Dark Knight by Frank Miller, uh, and I can understand why. But uh, yeah, <laughs> then we got uh, the Crow special edition uh, by James Barr. Uh, when I was a teenager, I really liked uh, the Crow mo movies, and uh, so it was really fun to. Uh, I, I've actually read a, a trade paperback uh, with the Crow before, because I have one, uh, and I really liked that one too. But uh, this is what the movie uh, was built on. Uh, this is is, is the stories. And uh, well, it's not that good, really. <laughs> it's really like uh, emo gothic. Uh, it's it's very. I mean, James Abar wrote this book when he uh, lost his girlfriend uh, in a car accident, and uh, this was his way to. Uh, work with his emotions, kind of, and uh, 
Well, it's... It's so... Awful sometimes. <laughs> but... Uh, if it worked for him, then fine. And it uh, beca became really great movies. I love almost every Crow movie. I think there are... I love the darkness in, in them. Well, we move on. Shaolin Cowboy. And uh, I've got the uh, hardback with Shaolin Cowboy from before. Uh, I, I really looked a lot of. Uh, I, I've been searching a lot for uh, Shaolin Cowboy, and when I saw this in a uh, trade uh, trading uh, group on Facebook, I was. Uh, it just blew my mind. And as I found out, this is out of print, and somehow. It, it seems to be really hard to find, so I was really glad to find this. And, uh, and for you who have, haven't read The Shaolin Cowboy, this is just uh, a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Jeff Darrow, who, uh, who has made Shaolin Cowboy, he um, uh, his paintings is uh, very uh, detailed and very. It's, it kind of reminds me about the Mobius uh, drawings, um, but there you can. This is what I've read it the second time now. I've read it on uh, digital before, and uh, you find out new stuff every time you read it. Uh, just by watching the pictures and he uh, yeah really lovely if you like that kind of uh, if you're into cool drawings you can read the uh, Jeff Darrow stuff then we got uh, a criminal book uh, Bad Night by uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips and uh, I've never re read uh, the anything from Criminal before, uh, and this is the fourth book, uh, so I took a leap. But it's it seems that it's um, you you don't have to re read the other books to read this. So uh, uh, and this was great, really great. Ed Brubaker has really a mind for uh, writing and uh, he also always puts in a twist to the story and uh, it's it's always surprising to read Ed Brubaker and I, uh, I also love the film noir the feeling to it also the drawings is very film noir So that was a goodbye, a good, a goodbye, goodbye, yes. Then we got Godland, also bought this from a trade group on Facebook. And uh, this is by Joe Casey and Tom Scioli. I don't really know what to think. I I, I, uh, what I can, could remember, I... I think I enjoyed it. It was quite funny, but uh, I won't. Uh, yeah, if if I find the other books on a great price, then I will buy them. But uh, I won't search for them. So, and uh, this the art is kind of uh, like uh, very old school. But still a bit sloppy, so and I think that's why I didn't really find it that cool. But uh, as you can see here, a little of it. Well, we move on, and we got this Elephant Man, Volume Zero. 
and I got this uh, for a great price because of uh, I don't know if you can see it but the edge here is uh, all messed up I don't I don't I don't think about that stuff too much I just want to read them so I thought that was a good buy but um, uh, what can I say about the story I think I have to read more because this is kind of, uh, volume zero is like a companion to the other volume so I don't really know if this is the real storyline uh, so I thought the, some of the pictures was really cool but sometimes it was, it was kind of uh, sloppy as well so uh, it's not the best thing I've seen uh, I don't really find a good picture to show you but yeah this one I think I I like this one sorry about the bad lightning in here so let's move on and we got Northlanders I bought this at Gothenburg book festival and uh, I thought this was really good uh, every story in this book uh, has a nice touch to it and uh, if you like the TV show Vikings then you will love this because it's kind of epic and uh, all the artists who worked on this uh, does a great job uh, I found I found my, myself a new favorite here uh, Marian Church Church Marian Churchland her uh, drawings was really beautiful so I'm going to buy some uh, books of her in the near future I hope to show you something here uh, her uh, drawings are really subtle and just so distinct it's a certain way of drawing that I really like I don't know if that's a good there maybe well you can google her otherwise Marian Churchland Churchland great book I hope they will release more of this by Brian Wood and uh, looking forward to read more now we got uh, I got this really cheap price Spider Gwen Most Wanted Volume Zero and it's kind of like an introduction for her I think cool drawings uh, Yeah, I don't really have something to say about this. It's uh, obviously another. I don't know much about Marvel and DC. Uh, I I, lo I loved reading Marvel and and uh, some of the DC when I was a kid and teenager, but uh, then I didn't read more, uh, and until to this. Now I'm like thirty. 33 years old and uh, now I've been starting reading again and uh, it's a lot of lot to catch up but uh, I really prefer stuff that isn't Marvel and DC really uh, but uh, I'm trying my best and it's obvious here uh, that Gwen actually has a band with Mary J and uh, that's really weird to see when you 
when you're grown up with Spider-Man and that other universe. So uh, you can see behind me here, I got all my uh, Swedish single issues of Spider-Man, and uh, it's quite a lot. I haven't read all of it. It's I, I really prefer not to read in Swedish because it's so lame sometimes and uh, kind of get disappointed. <laughs> well, we move on to. Uh, let's. I, I can show you this one. I bought a little small book by uh, No Bro Press. It's uh, The New Ghost by Robert Hunter. And this is really cool. I hope to find more uh, of uh, Robert Hunter's uh, work. Uh, really beautiful, artsy kind of uh, drawings. And uh, it's a kind of artsy story too. Uh, poetic and weird. Yeah, well, I don't find a good picture here, but yeah, no. I show you like this, but this really cheap, like uh, uh, six bucks or something. Really great. And then we move on to the hard covers. And we got this is a really beautiful book, uh, the Fifth Beetle, the Brian Epstein story by Vivek J. Tivere and Andrew C. Robinson and Kyle ba Baker and this is the collector's edition uh, Book Depository has this on a really great price because uh, all the other bookstores I've uh, seen this in takes a, l a lot of money for it so uh, this was a really great buy and it's so beautiful drawn. Uh, they really capture the likeness of the real Beatles. And uh, they capture the Beatles' real sense of humor. So, uh, oh, and it smells so good. So good. It came in a, a special uh, casing. Uh, that was a bit cool, and uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't any design on it or something like that. It was just for uh, keeping it uh, uh, safe in uh, when uh, postal handling. <laughs> what do you say when it's uh, shipped abroad? So, but it, it uh, was obviously not. It wasn't book depository who had. Uh, put that case on it, in it, 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 it ah, fuck it, <laughs> I can't explain it, but it was really a luxe edition, I think, so uh, check that one out, the story was, well, it was okay, but the, the thing that was really cool was the drawings, and uh, yeah, well, everything else. <laughs> and now we come to a really great book. I mean, this was the... This month's best buy. And it was uh, Beasts of Burden, Animal Rights. By uh, uh, Evan Dorkin and Jill Thompson. And it's uh, Dark Horse Books. Who has released it. And... Uh, it was really great. So adorable stories about a uh, gang of uh, uh, dogs who uh, solves uh, paranormal uh, mysteries, kind of. Uh, the f I can tell you about the first story is about a little dog who can't sleep in his uh, new dog house uh, because he's haunted and he uh, calls for their help and assistance and they uh, they find uh, 
the dog's bone, uh, uh, the bones of a dog hidden underneath the doghouse. Uh, so they want to release the spirits, uh, so to say. And uh, that's how they uh, start their journey, kind of. And uh, it's so. It's not. I, 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 at first, I thought it was a book for children, or maybe teenagers, but it's kind of, uh, kind of uh, bloody and dark at uh, uh, later on. Uh, uh, but I really love the characters. The, every dog has a certain character to it, and uh, it's beautiful. Not not the greatest uh, artwork. But I, it's kind of beautiful with all these uh, watercolor colorings, and uh, yeah, I think I. This is I think it's written in six years or something, in a six years period, so I don't think they will release anything new in a while, so to say. Uh, but I hope they will. I hope this will trigger them to do a lot more in a faster pace. <laughs> but this is this month's rec biggest recommendation is Beasts of Burden. And I thought I heard on radio e earlier today that they will do a movie too. I have to check that out with uh, Daniel Radcliffe in the leading role. But that's kind of weird because it's only dogs in this story. So maybe he will make a do a voice voiceover. Let's move on. I'm as usual. I keep babbling about one and the same book. Uh, now we have Mox Knox by uh, John Cornella. Ah, sorry about the lighting. This is so funny, such a disturbed humor <laughs> and funny because of the disturbance. Uh, it's really small and it was kind of cheap. So, but it's so, man, you have to, what? I, I followed uh, John Cornella on inst Instagram for uh, quite a while, so I've been interested in buying something by him, so uh, when I found this on Book Depository, so then I just had to have it, <laughs> really. And uh, I have to show you something. Check him out on Instagram and you can watch a lot of the stuff he's d done. And it's so... So disturbed, <laughs> really. Let's move on, and we got a big, big one here. This is the complete eight ball by Daniel Claus. Before Daniel Claus uh, made any books, he made uh, these uh, single issues with eight ball, and uh, this is really where his uh, books, uh, the Ghost World, and uh, uh, the one I showed you before, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Sorry, uh, like a velvet glove cast in iron. Uh, that's where those books are from. So they are from this series. Uh, I think the Death Ray Gun is also from this book. I haven't finished reading this uh, yet. I finished reading the first book today, and it's consider it's two books in there. Uh, I really love the slipcase and uh, the, the art on this slipcase is so fucking beautiful, uh, really so cool and it was really expensive too but we don't have to talk about that and then we come to the books and they are also really nice but I I am so annoyed. Why the freaking hell did they 
not use sawn binding is so tight really you can't really read it up. so you have to like use your violent force to open it and that really annoys me, annoys me. They, they do this expensive slipcase edition and they don't use sawn binding what the hell really so that is what the only thing I annoy no not not the only thing I, I annoyed myself on with this book because really the stories with of by uh, Daniel Claus that has been released in on books uh, they are the best things that Daniel Claus has done uh, the f other stuff that is in I ate April is not that good it's just so so meaningless and just it, it's just uh, an early phase of every artist where, where they just tries out everything and uh, it's obvious he is a big fan of crumb in some of the storylines and I'm not a big fan of crumb really not that's more my uh, my late father's uh, uh, idea of how a comic should be but uh, I will keep reading them and uh, but but the stuff that he that the stuff that Daniel Claus has done that is good is really good so I'm not uh, I'm still a fan of him <laughs> But uh, I know that he has done some s stuff that isn't that good too. So let's move on to the last thing I think, yes. And it's Alice in Sunderland. I found this in uh, on Gothenburg Book Festival for a really cheap price. And I've heard some mention this before. So I bought it. But I only read a couple of pages and I'm not I don't think I will keep reading it really because it's really not my cup of tea and uh, it's by Brian Talbot and uh, yeah I didn't like it I, I don't really like this style it's a kind of a mixture of drawings and uh, photographies and other stuff and I, uh, no, no, not not my kind of reading material. Let's. Uh, I got an extra thing that I want to show you, and this is a. Uh, I found this book. No, I didn't fa found it. I I ordered it in a bookstore. This is a Swedish artist called uh, Jesper Baldersten. And he has released a new book called Valdo Stenen. And it's so. He's such a great artist, really. He does these simple paintings. They look simple, but they are probably really thought of. He has probably thought of them a lot before he engaged the motive. Let's show you something. He does very, and he has such a mixed uh, kind of art. He doesn't just do one thing. He does a lot of different uh, uh, mixed, uh, using mixed materials and stuff. Oh, it's so cute, and it's a lot of weird faces. So if you are in USA and you want some great art that you can't get <laughs> in the... <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. Uh, buy this if you if you can. If you, uh, it's it, actually in Swedish. There he does a lot of uh, writing too on some of the work, but. Uh, 
you don't actually have to read it. You can just watch the pictures because it's so beautiful. And I got a, a lot of books of uh, Jesper Waldostein from before and they are all really good. And there we have something. I haven't figured out how to show stuff the right way. And it's a really big book. And I fucking love it. So, that was all. I had to show you this month and uh, maybe we will see each other again in two months and let's see if I got any more books to show you. Well thank you for watching. See ya.